How crazy are iPhone photos getting? I have a $6,500 professional camera set up and I still reach for my iPhone over that camera more times than I'd like to admit. These are just a few photos I've taken over the years on my iPhone, starting out from the iPhone 11 Pro Max to the 12 Pro Max to the 13 Pro to the 14 Pro. And now today we're sat here with the 15 Pro and I have loved taking photos on this phone so far. And today I'm gonna to walk you through exactly what camera settings you need to be using on your iPhones to take the best quality photos possible. I've been shooting with these settings for the longest time. Aside from just running you through the camera settings, I'll also be running you through the lenses you should be using, exactly how to shoot and a few little tips and tricks when you are shooting photos. And then at the end of the video, I'll also be doing a full Lightroom mobile walkthrough on exactly how I edit my photos. And just before we dive into today's video, if you wanna go ahead and save yourself a load of time Time and make sure that your editing process is completely taken care of, you can go and check out my master collection of Lightroom presets. They're on sale now, they're available in the description. So go do yourself a favor. All right, so first things first, let's dive into the camera settings. Now, all you've got to do is open up the settings app and then scroll down to camera and boom. We're good to go. So let's dive into formats as this is the first setting that actually affects your photos. So right here up the top, we wanna to make sure we're shooting in most compatible. This makes sure that the camera isn't compressing our photos whatsoever. This is always ideal to change, especially when you get a brand new iPhone because for some reason they always choose high efficiency. All right, next up, we wanna make sure we're shooting with Pro Raw and resolution control turned on. And we wanna be making sure that the Pro Raw is set to Pro Raw Max, not just Pro Raw 12 megapixels. And this is because you wanna be shooting with the highest resolution possible. Not only is the Pro Raw side of things gonna take care of us just shooting a raw image, which means we can push, pull, and play with the colors and exposure of our photo until our heart's content. But when we're shooting at 48 megapixels, this means we're getting the biggest resolution possible, which means we can crop as much as we like, well, maybe not as much as we like, but as much as possible on the iPhone. And it also means that we're just getting the most resolution. So if we need to zoom in, if we need to print the photo, whatever it may be, this is the way to shoot the best and highest quality photos possible. Now we'll tell you this, if you are shooting in low light, if you're shooting in a darker environment, 48 megapixels is not gonna be your best friend. You get much more noise in the shadows when you are shooting at 48 megapixels in a dark environment. So keep this in mind. You can either turn this off and just be shooting with the 24 megapixel mode turned on, or you can turn this back on and shoot in the 12 megapixel mode. It's totally up to you. For me, personally, I just leave this set to 48 megapixels all the time. Okay, that pretty much wraps up everything we need to cover in formats. We're now gonna dive into preserve settings. Now this is a little bit of a shooting hack, but to be honest with you, this saves you so much time and makes your photos incredibly consistent. The idea here is that you can preserve the settings and make sure that the next time you open your camera app, it's exactly the same settings that you left it, or that you closed it with, which means you don't have to go in and turn Pro Raw Max on and you don't have to change the crop again or change the zoom, whatever it is, you can turn all these on and it makes life an absolute dream. So we're gonna turn camera mode on, we're gonna turn creative controls, depth control, macro control, exposure and adjustment, which is something we'll touch on later. This is absolutely key. We're also gonna make sure we turn night mode on, action mode on, Pro Raw and resolution control on, and Apple ProRes. This is more to do with video, well, not even more to do, completely to do with video. But while you're in here changing the camera settings, you might as well just turn everything on in preserve settings and be done with it. All right, so now we are out of formats and preserve settings. Make sure you come down to composition and turn the grid and level on. This, of course, isn't gonna level up your photo quality whatsoever, but it is gonna make sure that you're taking the best compositions possible, which means you'll have to be doing less cropping, which actually low key in turn actually means you'll be taking higher resolution photos because you won't need to crop later. It's a little life hack, if you will, but these grid and level settings are an absolute staple, super, super key and super, super crucial to make sure that you are taking great photos on your phone. Next up is photographic styles. This is something I don't turn on, I don't play with whatsoever because we're shooting in Pro Raw, so that's fine. Leave that as is. Coming down the list of settings here, make sure your main camera is set to 24 millimeters. This is the actual focal length of the lens, the main lens on the back of the camera. The 28 and the 35 millimeters is purely just a crop. 
crop. So if you want an uncropped image, make sure you're shooting with 24 millimeters on. From here, make sure portraits in photo mode are turned off. Definitely not a vibe. If you want to shoot portrait photos, just change over the portrait mode. Here, you also want to turn off prioritize faster shooting. This setting actually impacts your photo quality, which is quite interesting. If you're out shooting a whole lot of photos, it actually will decrease the quality of your photos to be able to write the photos quicker to your phone and allow you to keep snapping. Obviously, that's not what we want to do here at all. We want to make sure our iPhone never ever trips up or even thinks that they can decrease the quality of our photos. So turn this off and you'll be safe. All right, moving into actually taking the photos, we're here in our Photos app and just a few things off the bat. So if you just change all those settings, chances are your camera app is gonna look a little bit different. So first things first, you've got Raw Max in the top right-hand corner. Make sure you turn this on. Of course, we wanna make sure we're shooting in RAW and we wanna make sure we're shooting in 48 megapixels. This is just a quick little toggle off and on. Whoop, make sure that's on and we're good to go. Now, something else that is an absolute crucial, crucial part of taking photos, and I kind of touched on it and mentioned it before, is the preset exposure. So you can change your exposure by tapping on the, uh, on the screen and then moving the sun up and down. This isn't a really good way of changing exposure whatsoever. The best way to do it is to tap the meter in the top left corner that you just turned on, and then you can actually decrease by, let's say, one stop or two stops or increase. And what this will do, let's say we put it at minus one stop, that's it. Now when we're taking photos, it'll always be at negative one. That's it, until we change it. We put that back to zero, we can put plus three, whatever we like, and boom, we're good to go. But this is a really, really key way to make sure that you're always taking consistent exposures. Let's say you're outside, it's a really bright day, and you know that sky is gonna be way too blown out if it's just an even exposure. Just bring that down to minus one, and you should be sweet. Next up in our little bag of tricks when shooting is the lock auto exposure and lock auto focus. So we know if you just tap on the photo, it'll focus it, but if you tap and hold on the image, you'll see this AEAF lock come up on the top of the screen. And this means your auto exposure and auto focus is now locked. So if you're shooting something really far away, or you wanna make sure you're shooting something really up close and personal, you can get up close and personal, you can lock your focus, and then that's it. You can be taking photos and you can slightly be moving, which means it'll slightly be coming in and out of focus. But this is also a really crucial way to make sure you're taking great photos. And last but not least, something that I see so many people get tripped up on is the crop. It doesn't matter. If we tap this button here, and oh, if we tap it again, you can see that if I come into four by three and I tap on, let's say 16 by nine, I'm now shooting in 16 by nine, which is Instagram story crop, which is great. Now, if I take this photo just like that, and then I go to crop it later in the photos app, it'll actually give me the full crop. So it'll just be like I took the photo at four by three and now I can play with a crop later. So if I know that I'm shooting for Instagram stories, what I'll do is I'll actually shoot in 16 by nine. And this way I can get a bit of an idea of what the crop is going to look like take the photo just like that. And then if I want to adjust the crop slightly in the Photos app, I can do so and I lost no information whatsoever. This is crucial, but make sure you do not crop. And last but not least, just a little bonus one for you. Make sure you only ever shoot with the preset lenses. So for example, the 0 0.5, the one, the two, and the five, make sure you only shoot with these lenses. If you zoom between these, so let's say you are between two and five or God forbid, beyond five. Let's say you're at 3.4X. All this is doing is cropping in. You might as well just go to the two times that zoom, take the photo and then crop later. This is going to give you the exact same quality, but the flexibility to actually choose what you want in or out of the photo later on. That's the last little shooting tip that I'm gonna run you through. Let's dive into the edits. All right, so here we are inside of Lightroom Mobile. And if you're not using Lightroom Mobile already, what are you doing? This is where it's at. If you wanna be editing your photos whatsoever, Lightroom Mobile is the absolute GOAT photo editor. So go ahead and download it. It's completely free. And like I said in the beginning of this video, if you wanna check out any of my Lightroom presets, you can do so in the first link in the description and you'll be set. So anyway, I just wanna run you through a quick little edit on my phone here. This is a photo I took on the iPhone 15 Pro Max on the 5X zoom. It was just after the sun had come up or actually between you and I, it was a little bit later than just the sun coming up. But either way, the light was still really nice. Let's dive into the edit. So first things first, we're gonna come into the color tab here and we are just going to decrease the temperature as I really want a strong blue-ish aqua black kind of vibe on this shot. So we're just gonna decrease the temperature ever so slightly and then come into the color mix tab here and we're also going to drop the yellows and we're going to drop the oranges and we're also going to drop 
the greens. This way, it kind of kills out that whole color palette and we can work with the blues a little bit easier. I will come back into the color mix tab just a little later, but we're just gonna dive into the light tab here. We're gonna drop the contrast just a little bit here. We're also going to raise the shadows ever so slightly, and we're also going to decrease the highlights. We're then gonna come into the tone curve and the tone curve is where a lot of the magic happens. We're gonna drop the shadows here. We're gonna increase the mid-tones, which is also going to increase the highlights. And then we're gonna come in here and raise the blacks just a little bit. Nothing too crazy. If we tap on this and tap and hold, and then before and after, things are already looking very nice. We're gonna come into the crop here and we're just going to rotate this a little bit. We're gonna bring down a little bit less of the sky as well. So then all of a sudden things are looking good. We're gonna come back into color here, back into color mix, and then we're gonna jump into the blues. We're gonna make them a little bit more tealy aqua. I feel like that is an absolute vibe. And we're also gonna drop the luminance on them, which kind of brings the brightness of the sky down. And we're gonna do the same thing here, but kind of the opposite. So we're gonna take the aqua hues over to blue a little bit. We are also going to drop the luminance and we're gonna increase the, we're gonna increase the saturation there. So here we've now taken the photo from this to this. I think things are looking great. We're then gonna come into effects. We are going to hit effects, go into clarity. We're gonna drop this quite quite a lot. To be honest with you, the iPhone takes incredibly sharp photos. And while clarity doesn't directly affect the sharpness, I do really like the look of when you drop the clarity on your photos inside of Lightroom. So we're going to do that. We're also going to just drop the texture a little bit. And we're also going to drop the dehaze ever so slightly. We're then going to come into vignette and we're going to drop the vignette. And then I have a feeling we are pretty much gonna be good to go. We might drop the saturation of the blue a little bit more, and we also might add a cheeky little mask here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna add a radial gradient over the entire shot. This is something I love to do on all my photos. We're gonna invert it, hit the light, and then we're just gonna drop the exposure. Hit the tick, tap here, before, after, boom. I think things are looking incredibly clean, and I cannot believe I took this on an iPhone. So guys, that wraps up today's video. I hope you've learned something. I hope you can now go out with confidence and take some of the best iPhone photos you've ever taken. With that said, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you're new around here, a subscribe would mean the absolute world and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.